Good morning, everybody. Afternoon, evening, wherever you may be in the in the world today, and welcome to today's session: When and why to upgrade GRC technology, and what to look for in the solution. So I'm Emma. For those of you who don't know me, and I'm delighted to be joined by Sunya Chakravarti today and Adil Khan. Uh, before we start, just a few housekeeping items. The, um, the session will be recorded for reference after the session. Uh, hopefully, we'll get, through, we'll get round to some Q&A at the end of the session, so feel free to post your questions in the, in the control panel. Um, and before we dive in, I'll ask our speakers today to briefly introduce themselves, and then we'll dive right into the topic, which is why you're all here today. So, Sumya? Well, thank you, and uh, very delighted to join today's presentation. Uh, thanks to you and Adil for inviting me. Uh, I have a mixed background, mostly in risk management. Uh, as they say, jack of all trades. I've done a few things different times in my career. But uh, these days, I tend to focus more on enterprise and operational risk management and GRC. And uh, I focused uh, my career after spending some time in big four consulting uh, and also, you know, helping some big banks with risk management and compliance. Um, these days, I'm more focused on helping companies to kind of grow their GRC strategy and maturity and kind of lead them on that transformational journey to implement better controls to enable risk management, but also to understand uh, their technology needs as it comes to risk management and frame those requirements uh, uh, and into design solutions that really enable their the maturity of their GRC journey. But when we talk about GRC, and we'll come to this later, it's more of a program and a discipline, but technology solutions play a, a big role. And that's where I come in and help companies like SafePass really you know, understand the client needs and help uh, make better outcomes for their success. So with Absolutely. that, I'll pass it on to Adil. Yeah, it's great to have you here, Sumia. Thanks for joining us. Adil? Samia, thank you. Welcome to our webinar series. Uh, yeah, Adil Khan, most of you that follow SafePass know me. I've been part of this journey for uh, almost two decades now. So uh, yeah, so my background is in financial controls and technology controls. Um, more recently, I've uh, been working on enterprise level GRC solutions for our clients. So uh, <clears throat> my experience has been working with really uh, learning from our customers. I've traveled around the world, probably 300, 3 million miles or so <laughs> on five continents and uh, helped customers uh, implement uh, financial controls that helps them satisfy some of the GRC requirements. Uh, more recently, we're focused on access governance. That's the big focus of SafePass as it's in our name. So it's a platform for helping customers improve their access controls. And Somi and I have uh, traveled um, in similar uh, professional circles and have kept up with each other, each other. And I thought it'd be a good time for us to kind of look back and look ahead uh, now that we've been in this industry for a uh, couple of decades and share with you some insight on what we have learned and then how we can uh, help you improve your GRC strategy, your financial controls, your access controls. So I um, also served on a board of a public company and I also served on Oracle application user groups, um, special interest groups. Thanks Adil, great to have you join us today. So as Adele said, uh, SafePass, we've sat in the offices of some of the most complex organizations around the world, uh, helping them mitigate risk with advanced control solutions. Uh, we have over 5.7 million ERP users on our platform and have identified more than 445 million unique risk incidents, really making SafePass um, the most utilized cloud platform for detecting and controlling access risk in enterprise applications. So we're laser focused on uh, identity access governance, um, you know, segregation of duties, user provisioning, access certification. Um, so, so yeah, so if you'd like to learn more then, then please give me a, give me a shout and I'll be happy to, to help you. Sumia? 
Yeah, so as I was saying in my introduction, um, I founded RISPRO Solutions, um, I think about early 2019. And the, the focus was really kind of act as the glue in between the customers and technology solution providers in providing GRC implementation support. But also where I see myself um, really you know forging the the foundational framework and on which a lot of these grc solutions are based is in kind of improving the 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 maturity and some of the the key elements based on which every grc program is um you know established uh, or and definitely technology is then becomes a good enabler and these include things like you know helping develop frameworks for risk and control assessments. And one of the big things that I've focused on of late is integration. I mean, um, we hear this term very often, um, integrated risk management, but really what does that mean and kind of breaking it down into kind of the component elements and really looking closely at how technology supports each element of the integrated risk management framework. And that's where I look at things like you know, continuous monitoring, which we're going to look at today, but also looking at some of the controls optimization, process optimization, and, and then last but not the least, education of your customer uh, as well as your employee base in, in learning about risk and controls. Because risk and controls is a discipline by itself, and not everybody's kind of familiar with it. So making that change, making that leap forward. And even when you implement new systems, and it's not just about the how to use the technology, but also kind of learning that new mindset, that is um, key. So that's where our um, team comes in and really enables the uh, optimized use of technology. Thanks there, Zoom, yeah. So the agenda we're gonna to follow today, so we're gonna start off by kind of setting the, the scene. What is GRC? There's a lot of confusion out there in the market. Um, so, you know, what do GRC systems actually do? Uh, and we'll go right back to when GRC technology first came about, you know, open pages, Paisley, logical apps. Um, and then what are the challenges, um, you know, that organizations face when, they, when they're when they still using outdated GRC technology, what to look for in your in a replacement, and then how SafePaths can, can help. So let's dive right in and, you know, really kind of make it clear to our audience, what is GRC technology? What's it all about, Sumya? Yeah, and as I was alluding to earlier, uh, GRC is more like a program or a discipline. And I, I lifted this definition from um, Open um, Compliance and Ethics Group, uh, which really has embraced the, the concept of GRC in the last couple of decades very well, and basically says it is an integrated collection of capabilities. And really the focus is on the word integrated uh, that allows organizations to reliably achieve its objectives. Again, that's that strategic goal in mind uh, and then mitigate risk and stay compliant the staying compliant is an outcome what we often see is com companies actually start from the compliance bit and then they go up to the strategic end which is fine but i think having that broader outlook is really what grc enables um, now I, and i would say a couple of years ago i wrote a, a paper or an article on linkedin and those who follow me can find that and basically that was around, we hear these buzzwords, GRC, enterprise risk management, integrated risk management. And essentially, in my opinion, they all mean the same thing. It's uh, You cannot really achieve governance, risk and compliance or um, without an integrated approach. And to have that, you need that, you know, that program framework of risk and compliance management and really technology work in tandem and technology does play a big role and that's what we are here to talk about today so so what are some of the key capabilities that you see um, is like the standardization of risk and compliance management activities I mean you can put in a, a an Oracle GRC or safe pass or an approval solution across different business elements but if you have different frameworks for managing and monitoring your controls 
then you're probably not using that technology very well. Um, if you don't have any kind of communication and collaboration across your different business units and how they manage their compliance management activities, you're going to end up doubling your efforts and spending spinning a lot of wheels around an overhead with that in managing compliance. And basically, you know, you, learning to use the technology in the most effective manner to, to not only just monitor your risks, but to enable compliance reporting and, and um, reporting on the state of compliance uh, using key metrics, et cetera, up to your top level management. So your senior management has, the, has that assurance and also the comfort around how well the company is meeting its compliance goals, how well it's managing its operational risk. These are all key components of GRC. And we will see that GRC technology solutions actually um, help manage or have capabilities to manage all of that. Uh, so you're talking of things like compliance dashboards, you can have things like end-to-end -end issue management, you can have things like data visualization, but then also when we ta start talking about the tech, you know, some of the tactical solutions, things like you know, enabling safe pass and you know, access management or access governance. In fact, your own <clears throat> identity and access management strategy uh, and implementing that through not just detective monitoring controls, but also preventative controls that um, help um, kind of manage your strategy. <coughs> so can, can you add anything to the Before we move on? No, I think uh, so. I mean, you covered it well. So yeah, I I just want to uh, reemphasize from a safe pass perspective, what I see our customers demanding is an integrated approach to these various elements of managing risk. So you manage risk. Uh, for compliance, um, so if you're following, let's say, Sarbanes-Oxley, there's a, a component of uh, risk that you're managing by uh, certifying the financial statements under SOX 302 and 404 um, on a quarterly annual basis. You're also looking at controls uh, like segregation of duties within your enterprise applications. Uh, you're certifying access on a periodic basis. So those are examples of technologies where SafePass has helped customers get to that outcome that uh, Somia is talking about. But uh, from a from a framework standpoint, I think that's where the strategy comes in, right? Where folks like Somia can come in and very quickly tell you where you may have alignment gaps. So what I hear as an outcome on the technology side is where people are burdened, where multiple audit requests are coming in about the same control. And, and that's a good symptom where we need to invite someone like Samia to our customers and say, guys, you know, before we put technology in, why don't you really align your initiatives across your strategy first, right? So look at how many times you have to certify a control. Maybe it's control frequencies once a quarter, and maybe one control satisfy other mandates. So for example, I'm seeing more recently, you know, cybersecurity controls that are based on NIST where access privileges, entitlements have to be reviewed, but that's also a SOX control and that's also a GDPR control, right? So we can help uh, with our partners like Somia strategize on how to align your activities against what the objectives are. And, and that's where I think the biggest value I see in our partners where you, know, you can implement technology to get results. It's a pretty easy process. If we're in the cloud, as Emma said, but it's about that alignment and that strategy that drives those activities on a day-to-day basis that are enabled through our products or automation. So I think it's an excellent opportunity. If you if you have not taken that journey, I would strongly recommend you know next opportunity you get to at least assess where you are, find the gaps, and get a deliverable that will help you align your technology with your strategy. So how Excellent. can we how can we classify the solutions then, Zomia? Yeah, and the reason we had the previous slide and this slide is to show the audience um, the lay of the land when it comes to GRC technology solutions. Obviously, we have a lot of niche solutions in the market, and everybody's uh, calling um, their solution GRC. 
which is probably right, but um, it, it's a little bit like the analogy of three blind men trying to describe an elephant by touching different parts of the uh, of the elephant. So the, the world of GRC is very broad. And really, as I said in the previous slide, it enables that holistic compliance mission um, uh, and operational risk management mission um, across different areas of the company. I mean, if you're especially a global organization with multiple footprints and different geographies, different products, um, you are uh, subjected to different compliance frameworks as Adil mentioned too. So how do you enable that? And to the, this is a visual that I um, have used in the past and, and I really like to use to describe GRC solutions. And, and this basically comprises of three tiers uh, where you'll find there are these um, solutions that are um, more in the kind of the operational areas and they do certain niche activities. So for example, Continuous monitoring and continuous auditing. What does that mean? You know, it kind of things that we monitor for like, you know, privileged access management, segregation of duties management, you know, even to the point of, um, you know, preventative uh, access controls and implementing your you know, identity and access management strategy, you know, making sure when your co new companies, uh, new employees come into the company or employees leave the company, that their access is turned on and off in, in accordance with your IAM policies or access management policies. It's ensuring um, the controls that you have within your business processes or in your access and IT uh, systems, they are you know, tested for op, uh, design and operating effectiveness in an ongoing manner. And then yeah, the, those re results are actually reported in a uh, in a meaningful manner, not only just for auditors but also for senior management to understand the 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 kind of the state of the union when, when it relates to your risk and con uh, controls. So that's uh, and that's where a bulk of the you know the Versa, the SafePass, the Oracle GRC. Uh, approval solutions are in that operational layer. And in my opinion, that's a key uh, capability because without that capability, it's gonna be very hard to do, do anything. You'd be doing a lot of your controls testing through manual processes, which are not only just inefficient, uh, it's also uh, uns not sustainable given the amount of systems and controls that um, companies have. And to ensure that they are tested, they're you know run, they're executed in a in an ongoing, an efficient manner, an effective manner, um, these solutions play a, a big role. The next layer is what I call the tactical layer, and you know you could probably um, name it different ways. But why it's a tactical is it helps lay uh, um, down the framework under which risk and controls are managed within the company. Uh, this is where you kind of enable a lot of the risk and controls identification and assessment processes, uh, whether it be financial risk, whether it be other operational risk, whether it be compliance risk, fraud risk, whatever have you. And it's really this layer that is the glue in my opinion that uh, makes sure that um, there is integration that Adil spoke about. Um, you know, you have different frameworks of compliance, GDPR, NIST here in the US. Um, you have Sarbanes-Oxley, you, you have something else going on. You have ISO. Those frameworks can all be integrated in the tactical layer. And you then align them to your risk and controls inventories. Uh, and so this, this tactical layer has solutions, um, for example, we see IBM open pages or metric streams or, or you know, your RSA archers that basically provide that capability to align your risk and control matrices your, and with your risk mitigation and monitoring. And if you look at the downward arrow and bi-directional arrow, this is where the tacticals should talk to your controls monitoring solutions and, and help kind of understand where, what is the state of the union with your controls? How well are you complying to to your you know GDPR or CCPA or you know Sarbanes Oxley control key controls? 
uh, and and feed that again up to the to, to the layer at the top. So again, this uh, and this is the area where I spend a lot of time in in enabling our partners, our clients, with kind of um, kind of rationalizing their controls and risks across different frameworks. And then the topmost layer is what I call the strategic layer. This is kind of the the business intelligence layer, but it's not just business intelligence. I mean, this is where you enabling enable the, the organization alignment of your risk management activities with your mission, strategy, objectives, values. And in doing that, you know, you, you rely on a lot of the integrated reporting and analytics. So kind of collecting and collating all the data across the different organizational and functional units uh, and visualizing it and presenting it to your senior level management so that it's presented in in a, what I call as informational way, not in a data way. So you collect the data and you make it into information. You can then uh, really do some uh, cool analytics on it and, and run what if scenarios. What if I turned on, you know, um, uh, administrative access for these amount of people? Uh, what if I, you know, decide to re remove a, a compliance function? So a lot of these things, you know, management does look for information because obviously there are costs uh, associated with it, there are competing priorities, but this, this strategic layer is what helps management understand the status of risk and compliance within in the organization and how things are being managed. Avil, do you want to add anything to that? You know, I think uh, that was a really good recap. I'll just give you some examples to reinforce the points you've made. So, you know, we have a wide range of customers, uh, 200 some customers, and I have put a book together, it's called the GRC Handbook for Oracle Applications. And that covers that for Oracle customers specifically, which is where I spend a lot of my time. So, you know, at the strategic level, our customers have come to us and said, you know, we have to develop a, essentially a key risk indicator framework. We wanna be able to do risk assessments at the strategic level, um, you know, every few years. So uh, there's a company that specializes in uh, one of the largest companies in in paint uh, and paint products uh, around the world, and you know they they use um, I don't know key risk indicators, which is essentially a, they brought in a, a firm to help them identify in a facilitated workshop with senior management that identified uh, okay what are the key risk indicators that are stopping us from the very definition of risk is the ability for you to, uh, uh, you know, risks in uh, or the ob obstacle in being able to achieve, achieve your strategic objectives. So this this company came up with some ideas like, um, you know, we have to make sure that we're maintaining our market share or growing that market share. We make sure we have access to financial uh, lines of credit. So those are external factors. They're internal factors uh, that we focus mostly on is you know how is your procure to pay cycle you know what are the risks in your procure to pay cycle um so they're head of procurement so they went through this full cycle that they, they had let's say 10 strategic objectives they came up with these macro risks at the strategic level right and they framed that in our uh, kri application which enables them to then monitor those on a periodic basis we have customers on wall street that have a very different view of risk uh, this example i just gave you more industrial organizations. So from a Wall Street standpoint, the risk was about losses on their day trading, you know, trading losses, uh, CDO losses, as you guys might remember from the 2008 crisis. So those are the kinds of risks that a financial institution tracks. To Somia's point, you know, it's very much a business industry specific, business model industry specific exercise. And you really needed that to be a facilitated exercise because as uh, Somia said previously, it's not a domain that um, you normally find in-house information readily available, unlike, you know, let's say uh, some technical skill like to write code or, uh, you know, compile programs. This skill is, 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 is hard to find. So you need these experts to come in and help you provide the strategy. Then it can be mapped in solutions like SafePass. The second layer, tactical, is uh, where we have seen a lot of success and some failure also, right? So many of the organizations have adopted some sort of a platform to document their risk and controls, even do uh, periodic updates, document updates, certifications. Some of the products that came to market in the early days of Sarbanes-Oxley were, were more tactical because the 
strategy was outlined hey if you don't comply you're going to jail right so it was a it was really started at the tactical level we'll talk a little bit about our products in the next few uh, minutes but uh, but I do want to tell you that there's a lot of com customers that have some solution they may be using spreadsheets to manage their risk and control matrix often called RCMs uh, they that they use to track everything some have built access database some are using SharePoint others are more sophisticated they're using products that we'll talk about in a minute like metric stream and open pages. Uh, what we found in the market is those products were great at a tactical level to document uh, the controls and even the status of manual controls. But where our customers are driving us to is to streamline and automate and integrate those controls so that uh, you know this during this great resignation period, you know, labor costs are very high and hard to find. People are looking for safe paths to drive operational costs down and uh, support this hybrid work model. So the pressure from our from market that we feel today is that, okay, we have some, we have a strategy, we're gonna bring in um, someone to review that. We need, um, you know, operational um, components in place, tactical components in place, and that drive to that operational components place. And that's where we're seeing a lot of automation uh, around preventing and detecting risks within enterprise applications that are pervasive, whether they're on the cloud or on-premise. So yeah, those are some examples of just validating what I see from our customers uh, to, to highlight uh, the, the points that, that you made, Sonia. Yeah, and one other thing I would like to add, very, very much valid points, Adil, um, is when we look at the technology space, uh, what we're seeing is that there's no one size that fits all, and there's no one single solution that you will see spanning across all three capabilities. Um, some play well in the strategic play uh, domain, some play well in the tactical domain. Right. And then the real key um, component, and we'll discuss about what to look for in a GRC solution, is the ability to, to kind of string them together into a, a, an integrated solution that really fits your company's needs. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, the overriding word that comes to mind is alignment, right? I mean, if these three things are not aligned, then you are you have a disaster and you need people, experts that have done it for many, many years to help you align this. That's right. Okay, well, let's go back to the beginnings of GRC. Where did GRC start? I mean, I think, in, and I'll let Adil uh, focus on this also a little bit because he's been, he's seen it all. Um, you know, uh, back in the days when, you know, Servants Oxley first came about, we saw the advent of some of these tactical solutions as Adil was talking about. And they really grew around the, the, the fact that there was need for management of some of these complexities uh, and that is, um, acts like Servants Oxley's place that for the first time, people had to document their financial risks and financial controls and yes, it, they started with Excel or access databases, but it quickly kind of spun out of control that they were not sustainable. So you started to see um, you know, solutions like um, you know, Paisley or ICM or Open Pages that started in domains. Paisley, for example, started as an audit solution. Open Pages started as a SOC solution. ICM, I, I don't remember, but they were more of a compliance, integrated compliance management was the, what it stood for. But the, as these things started to progress, and by the time the great financial crisis came by in around 2007 or eight, we started seeing some of the challenges around, as uh, Adil was mentioning, like keeping up the sustainability of, for example, manually control, uh, assessing effectiveness of controls became pretty cost effective and cost prohibitive. And then also, you know, just being able to not only just have a, a risk and control matrix, but also being able to, you know, tie and integrate across the, the domains of where solutions like Approva were developed to automate some of the, the control testing and monitoring uh, with that tactical layer. So that's, that's how these things came by and then uh, there was a more of a need to present some of these uh, up the, the food chain or the organization chain to the senior management. And we started to see some of the development of strategic solutions. 
And as things have progressed uh, since then, I've seen that there has been um, you know, growth into other areas. For example, in the 2009-10 the uh, market, we saw a huge jump off uh, in IT risk management and IT compliance. Now, of course, cybersecurity is one of the top risks. And so cybersecurity risk management, you have frameworks like NIST 853 or NIST RMF, and managing that uh, itself is uh, somebody's full-time job. So you have solutions that basically cater to that need. And ha that's how like all of these solution providers have also started to provide those niche capabilities uh, taking some of this knowledge um, uh, out of the standard frameworks and, uh, and operationalizing it on their, their technology solutions. So point is that as you start to think about the journey of these tools and also some of the, they, they're based on some of the needs changing with their client or customer basis and how they are progressing um, in terms of their maturity, they meaning the customers also derives when and how some of these technology solutions come into play. And as I said earlier, sometimes uh, clients um, are looking at multi-solution approaches to, to meet different parts of their GRC uh, needs. Adil, you wanna add something? Yeah, no, I think what, when I look at the slide, it's uh, you know people that are new to GRC might not be able to appreciate the benefit of talking about this. I, I think if you, are new to GRC or if you've been part of the GRC journey like us for a couple of decades, I think one message I would like to pass on is that that the, what is the market uh, driving towards, right? So the market is driving towards better controls, better compliance, better governance, where, and, and then it's coming from different directions. It's being mandated by the governments of, around the world. So US, this trend, when I started following in was I was running a public company listed on NASDAQ and uh, President Bush at the time in 2002 signed the um, Sarbanes-Oxley Act. Uh, and I was scared, you know, I didn't want to sign the financial statements because the consequences of any mistakes uh, on the financial statements were that you, it was a criminal penalty. This was the first time in US history that a criminal penalty was tied to financial statement risk in the past even in the crashes of 1920s, it was all about, when SEC was first created, Securities and Exchange Commission was first created in the US, was an outcome of 1920s uh, financial uh, mismanagement. It never had uh, criminal penalties. So it was a, 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 you know, pardon the word, paradigm shift uh, in, 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 in managing financial controls. And what you saw was, the reason this is helpful to talk about is that these trends just started getting bigger and bigger, right? So it, it was an outcome, sarbanes Oxley was an outcome of failures of publicly listed companies like Enron here in Texas, as well as auditors that audit those companies like Arthur Anderson, there used to be Big Five, for those of you that may not know that, we call it Big Four, but Arthur Anderson disappeared. And a number of my friends and, and so forth worked there, that colleagues and so forth, so it was a, it was a big uh, disaster, right? As a result of missing controls um, and financial controls over the financial statements. So, so that was, uh, you know, where this journey starts, right? When we started tracking, and you had some players come to the market successfully, like the ones listed under 2003. And then, uh, as we saw the housing crisis in the U.S. and it turned out to be a global crisis, credit crisis where you know, the credit default swaps were being used to finance some really uh, risky assets um, in the market. And you saw a collapse of uh, Solomon Brothers and a number of investment banks in the US, and there was a trillion dollar bailout. And so that created the need for not only documenting the risks and testing them manually, but really trying to automate more of them. So demand for uh, you know, automated controls started to pick up. And what we see there is these new players coming in, like Approva, for example, uh, that had the ability to go across different ERP systems, right? It could do SAP, it could do Oracle. Also the software vendors, uh, like Oracle acquired Logical Apps, uh, Versa was acquired by SAP. Software vendors, the top tier software vendors said, oh, we need this, these controls for our customers 
or they're not going to be able to rely on our financial statements coming out of our financial systems. So they quickly went to the market, acquired these organizations. There was a number of M&A occurred as a result of that. And so what you're seeing here is that the risk is continuously growing. The regulatory, regulatory bodies are continuously putting new mandates. And uh, then you saw the crisis of you know, Facebook, for example, where you know, data protection became a huge issue after the, uh, uh, the elections in the US where it was discovered that Facebook was selling a lot of their data to, to, um, to people that were misusing it, right? So the European Union put together the GDPR Data Protection Act. So all of these crises have led to hopefully better results. And we're, we're, what we're learning is, what we're learning on this side as a vendor is that you cannot be enough vigilant enough, right? You have to constantly be looking at the controls in, in a way, continuously monitoring them, making sure they align with your objectives. And, uh, and that's, that's what gets us out of bed every day here at SafePass because we don't think our job is done till we solve this you know, multi-trillion dollar problem that exists in the marketplace today, which destroys people's livelihoods and businesses because either there's some nefarious players in the marketplace that we all link together you know, through this chain of uh, business and commerce today across the globe where they cause massive disruptions to the marketplace. So um, we're continuously working to get better. Um, hopefully in our lifetime, we'll achieve some of our goals, but a journey has just started, right? So this is, well, two decades sounds like a long time, but it's just a small uh, beginning compared to overall financial markets that are 200 years old. So why should somebody invest in GRC, GRC technology then? How can it help? Yeah, I think this is primarily um, the the crux of the the what we're trying to present here, uh, and really the question around when or why should you consider upgrading your technology um, for GRC really, you know, begs us to look for what are you looking in a GRC solution. So some of the things that we see is around the the concept of being well managed. And what does well-managed mean? So it's things like timely detection, timely remediation, timely escalation of critical problems or issues. Um, yeah, also kind of ensure some organizational accountability. As Adil spoke about the financial crises and how it became um, a criminal penalty for any kind of mismanagement, the aim of those regulations was really to establish their accountability. And really, uh, one of the challenges uh, without having it formally documented somewhere is to establish that accountability. I don't know who manages this process. I don't know who's supposed to be the owner of this control. I don't know who's the owner of the systems. So some of those definitions, uh, mm -hmm. auditors and myself having been one, um, when we used to go to, to look at organizations, it was a challenge to establish and point uh, and say like this so-and-so, John Smith, uh, Jane, is this, the owner of this, <clears throat> you know, the, the control of the system. And lastly, but not the least, uh, I talked about the capability for aggregation of risks and compliance across the company. It is very important to have that um, aggregated view. So you present a consolidated view to regulators, to auditors, and to your investors uh, of the status of how well your internal controls are over financial reporting as well as the operational risk areas. Um, obviously, one of the things that we look at for, um, you know, in a GRC technology solution is the effectiveness. I mean, you, if, you, if you think about it very logically, what you do manually um, can be improved um, several fold through um, in terms of effectiveness when you use technology in a proper way. And where we start to see the benefits is around, you know, segregation of duties monitoring. I mean, some of these activities you probably can never do without automation. Um, and also, you know, just um, enabling uh, controls over identity and access management, making sure that every individual that works in your company has the right level of access there. When they don't need um, access should be granted on a least con uh, 
privileged basis, what does that mean when it comes to operationalizing it? How do you enable that, um, you know, Somia gets access on least privileged mechanism? So all of that is kind of enabled through the definition of certain parameters. We call hear this term called role-based access control. So you so these GRC technology solutions can help establish those parameters based on which you can effectively, you know, not only monitor but also prevent the 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 proliferation of access within your company, uh, and then also standardizing some of the rule sets within in terms of your configurable controls and and some of these solutions actually go into your ERP solutions and can enable those controls in your in in your um, ERP solution. Um, efficiency is a big part of um, technology solutions, but it's not the be all and end all. I mean, most people try and look at the uh, GRC solution as an automated testing tool to just kind of reduce the, the head count and the, 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 the effort it takes to, to develop like a, a risk control matrix or a, a SOD matrix. But obviously the efficiency is not something that we can overlook because it, it, some of these things are so resource intensive that you know, trying to do this manually, as I said earlier, through um, you know, spreadsheets or other tools is um, pretty much non-sustainable. I remember back in the days when I was at KPMG, um, we had developed an access-based tool that used to um, pull in some script data from um from your oracle database and or erp tables and, and being able to produce results but as things started to get more and more complex and you know oracle's uh development of its own you know security started to mature those tools sustaining those tools became quickly you know non-sustainable and went out of control so that's where the reliance on you know, third-party tools that really do this well and manage this well became important. And then last but not the least, risk intelligence, being able to collect all the data and being able to perform that cross-analysis uh, of risks, again, the organizational imperatives, that is a, a key factor. So if you look across the spectrum of well-managed, the increasing the effectiveness, efficiency, and risk intelligence, you can start to see different capabilities that you know you could start to leverage and we'll come to that in the next slide when we talk about why you, you should consider um you know upgrading your solution exactly so in the interest of time i'm going to skip over the the risks of using outdated technology and i i have a great blog that i can send over to the audience today that talks about that um, and let's talk about you know what to look for in a solution and how SafePath can, can help those organizations, uh, you know, those that are starting with GRC or those that are upgrading or looking for, you know, al alternatives to legacy uh, GRC technology. Yeah, and this is a great topic in my opinion, because obviously on one end of the spectrum, we still see companies that are struggling with some of the basic activities, especially the smaller organizations that don't have the budgets to in, invest in, in a safe pass or, or a prover, uh, where they still have to perform, you know, the activities related to ensuring that their controls are operating effectively, that their access management is working effectively, that their segregation of duties are being managed. Uh, but on the other hand, if you kind of cross across to the other, cut across to the other side, you'll see that companies are actually using some what we call as emerging technologies. Uh, and it's things like using, you know, natural language processing or artificial intelligence capabilities to, to kind of mine through the data and provide that intelligence uh, about, you know, your, your state of the union in terms of your operational and financial risks um, or using RPA solutions on top of your you know GRC technologies um, solutions to automate some of the the manual repetitive activities like controls testing uh, having workflow capabilities um, end to end to to not only just have the collection of data within your technology but also being able to talk to other 
solutions that, as I mentioned, the, you, you may have a mix of different systems in play and, and ensuring that you have the seamless data transfer in terms of coordinating, notifying the, the relevant, you know, for example, if I have a control test that is I need to perform and I'm late in providing uh, the results, um, notifying Soumya that your test is due or your issue needs to be closed by this time. Those are all these capabilities that are driven through workflow in the solution. And I can't emphasize how important it is to have this workflow capabilities. Uh, and a lot of um, you know, places I would say that I've talked to, uh, technology vendors would say, yes, we have it, but it's really, the, it's, a, it's an art versus a science. So there are workflow capabilities, but it depends on how you define them. Um, because it could lead to an overabundance of email notification or text message alerts, or you don't get the right alert. So um, it's it's an art in in terms of how well you design those solutions. But definitely to look for that that capability. Also, and I touched a little bit about this: the extensibility of the solution. What do I mean? It's basically to adapt to different niche needs of the organization. So. You, you can have an out-of-the-box solution that monitors against your Oracle GR, uh, ERP solution for, for risk and controls. What if you have a third party or a custom software? Does your solution enable monitoring over those? Or can you quickly you know, have an extensible adapter that goes into that solution and can perform the necessary controls monitoring? It, it's That's what I mean by extensibility. And those things are coming into play as we start to operate in more hybrid environments of financial and operational uh, systems. And then last but not the least, being able to collate and aggregate data across um, multiple dimensions. And this means like organization units, you know, business processes, and then also your regulatory frameworks and your risk taxonomies, and then being able to enable that alignment. That's, that's really where I see a key capability of uh, the GRC technology solutions to drive integrated risk and compliance management. Fantastic insight there. And Adil, so how can SafePass, how can SafePass help? It'd be yeah, great so to get your... I add to what, uh, what uh, uh, my observations based on what uh, Somia was saying on the previous slide. So this is the SafePass approach, but I really want to uh, emphasize the fact that that you know uh, this journey has started you know two decades ago and some of the legacy products they were very innovative like Approva and uh, Versa and Logical App these were some of the operational controls monitoring products in, in mid uh, 2000s um, so what uh, what uh, Swami was talking about on the previous slide is about the capabilities like data analytics advanced data analytics um, integration extensibility so in the old days, uh, companies needed that, and the way they were doing that is through very costly methods. In some cases, they just couldn't do it. There was a barrier to GRC technology, right? Um, so for example, if you had an Oracle GRC technology, which only works for e-business suite. So when Oracle introduced their uh, uh, cloud version, which many customers have adopted, many of them are SafePass customers, uh, they couldn't use that technology anymore. It was essentially obsolete. So you had to buy a whole new technology from Oracle for the cloud. And if you bought the cloud technology, it wouldn't work with the on-premise technology, even though they're both Oracle products, right? So if you're moving from e-business suite to cloud ERP, you cannot use any of that. Approval was doing fantastic in the early days, but they stopped and they were sold. So many of their uh, you know, technologies didn't go down that vision that they had about being able to co cover many of the ERP systems. Um, uh, same thing with SAP. So if you want SAP to connect to JD Edwards, you have to go to Greenlight and buy an adapter. In some cases, the cost of that adapter is higher than the than the what you paid for JD Edwards in ERP system, right? So these were some of the barriers. And so where SafePass comes in today in the modern I call it the fifth generation of, uh, uh, of this uh, GRC technology, is where things are all integrated. So as an example, if you look at this workflow, uh, you can see that we have a configurable application security model. What does that mean? So not only do we support you know, the top tier applications out of the box uh, that are out there, uh, you know, so PeopleSoft, JD Edwards, 
uh, Oracle Cloud, SAP, all these major technologies uh, that enable us to have as many as uh, you know five, six million users on our platform. You can configure any of the things. So we have customers that are coming to us. They're saying, well, we use certain products for managing our retail locations. They have hundreds of retail locations, but that's in that's a risk. And in the past, that would the answer would have been no because you would have to spend million dollars to integrate that application and work with that software vendor. What SafePass has done is enabled these, uh, as Sonia was saying, these API services where the user configurable, they're seamlessly integrated. So you can go and basically configure in SafePass what we call data probe, a security model, and then extract all the security information using APIs like REST, uh, SOAP. And so partners that have integration skills can really benefit and customers uh, can utilize those skills or have internal skills to be able to connect across the enterprise. So we have been working on this journey to make the GRC technology, technology fully aligned with your strategy. And your business is not going to wait for a software vendor to provide this capability. Business wants to uh, achieve the business objectives. So SafePass provides that agility and that scalability to be able to connect all of those risks that are exposed through the applications, whether they're in the cloud or legacy on-premise applications. So we have customers that use SafePass. Uh, they're moving to the cloud, certain business units are using Oracle Cloud ERP. They're used, still keeping some EBS on premise because they have some legacy businesses with different business units. And they have purchased other things like Workday, JD Edwards, uh, you know, SAP for other business units. So we can create not only all those tier one application, tie them together, but also uh, new applications that come to the market like Coupa and, uh, you know, uh, et cetera, that are coming to the market that also need to protect risk. So that's basically that first swim lane tells you how flexible the modern technology are, technologies are. And um, in the second swim lane, uh, we talk a little bit about um, how we detect risk, right? So uh, SafePass uh, is really a policy-based access management system, so uh, access control system. So we provide you a central global repository where independent of which uh, system you use, the controls need to remain valid. So just because you're upgrading from Oracle eBusiness Suite to going to cloud or HANA from the ECC, you don't wanna lose those controls, right? Uh, you wanna maintain uh, the capability that people that create suppliers should not be paying the suppliers. So in the old days, what you would have to do is really upgrade your GRC technology as well. And many times the new technology doesn't match the old technology. Uh, so with SafePass, you can be assured that um, your detection engine will work in such a way that you just simply define the policy at that business level, which is what business really wants, back to that alignment slide. So your alignment with executives is that we don't want as a policy for suppliers, uh, people that create suppliers to pay supplier in a global organization. What SafePass has done is now enabled you to apply that independent of what ERP or application or even data source uh, whether on cloud or on premise, you have where those activities are occurring. Uh, the other thing we have learned, um, and then of course the workflows we talked about earlier, right? So you can see that workflows are a very important part of SafePass. And as Somia said, you know, workflows are not all equal, right? Am I paraphrasing what he said? Uh, but basically, the workflows can be really hard-coded workflows. So they basically that one-step workflows. We're seeing that a lot in the identity governance uh, applications that have a single level workflow. So an example of uh, what Somia was referring to, I see that in the business all the time. Customers come to us and say, well, you know, um, the request goes to the manager. Manager says, oh, I don't mind if my employees have more access, but they're not responsible for the control. The control owner or the process owner is sitting in a different country. So let's say I'm sitting in Dallas and my manager says, you know, give Adele whatever he wants basically, right? Because I'm his manager, I want him to be happy but uh, Emma is sitting in Spain and she's responsible for financial controls over the, over the financial close process. So she's not even in the workflow, right? So even though you have this false sense of security that I've got a workflow, but Emma never heard about it and therefore I introduced a risk. So we create these up to five level workflows that are role driven, uh, that are uh, event driven, uh, and you can uh, route them based on the right responsible party 
that is designing your delegation of authority uh, at the enterprise level, right? So this way you can be just assured that your controls and risks that are being made, uh, uh, reviewed are going to the right resources. And that's what we mean by that third swim lane, that when the corrective actions come in, it's one thing to just look at a report and say, oh yeah, I guess, uh, you know, th these users have the ability to create and pay supply, I'll go tell someone to fix it. That's not good enough in the modern world. The business moves too fast, it's hybrid, it's changing. So what you wanna be able to do is create a workflow that goes in and tells the approver that, hey, you have this risk, and they take an action. That action is also recorded. So now we call that a closed loop workflow as opposed to a, a notification, right? And there's a lot of confusion in the market. You buy a product that's really a tool that sends notification, you think it's a workflow, that's not gonna pass the audit. Because what audit is looking for is that response loop that what action did the control owner or the process owner took? And then finally, how that action was uh, executed and completed, right? Because it's one thing for a process owner to say that, yeah, you know, go ahead and take their access away. But what auditor is looking for is the evidence that that access is actually taken away. And that's where that last swim, swim lane comes in, where we execute these corrective actions directly in the ERP. And I think slide slightly older, I might mean, we'll put a newer slide there. Um, so the, the, the actions are that the um, action might go into the ERP system. So where you're seeing this gray spot on the top, right? There'll be a new box that shows the ERP system. That ERP system is where we can go, whether it's cloud ERP, Oracle, eBusiness Suite, whatever you have, we have these APIs through uh, REST and SOAP and so forth, JDBC, where we can go and execute that action, right? So now you can say, okay, not only did the control owner, process owner approve this through the workflow, we can also actually execute that in the ERP. Other customers are using IGA systems like SailPoint or ServiceNow as an ITSM system. So they want us to go in those systems and really update the ticket or in a ServiceNow or a execution command in, in SailPoint. And so we have now APIs available back to the beginning of the presentation where we're talking about you know, integration capabilities and making risk integrated. So over the last years, customers have adopted lots of different technologies to protect themselves, but they are not integrated. What SafePass has done is provided you the ability to integrate all these provisioning systems where the risk is happening because they don't go to the fine grain level, also going down to the uh, uh, ticketing systems to execute those tickets, uh, going into your ERP systems to make sure that the user's access is corrected or taken away. And that's what's dri driving the efficiencies in the last two decades. That's what makes us a fifth generation solution because we have learned the lessons of the last two decades and integrated all of these uh, fragmented components of GRC uh, where things were manual or things were offline or things were done uh, through uh, emails and spreadsheets and integrated all of that into this uh, workflow that you see on the screen here. So uh, Excellent. yeah, we're almost out of time. Yeah. Yes, we are almost out of time. So do you have any um, closing comments, Sumia? Because we are at the top of the hour. No, I, I think uh, uh, the, the final thought that I would like to leave our attendees is, you know, the navigating the world of GRC is a complex thing. Uh, but as Adil and I hopefully have spent the last hour talking through, if there are different areas that where you need to kind of focus in what your needs are and, and often i speak to a lot of my clients and customers when they're talking about grc uh, and really their needs are not very well uh you know articulated and that's where you know companies like myself or individuals my like like myself um, really come into play and uh, really uh help you articulate your needs better. So you are utilizing the time with you know folks like SafePass in the most optimum way, enabling solutions that are you know the most useful and gives you the most bang for the buck. And I would say like start small. You don't have to make a big splash about GRC investment because people often think about it like just like oh my god I have got this pot of money and I've got to spend it all and let me turn on all the bells and whistles and then what you end up with is a complete mess and um to some to a large extent i've seen that that can turn off people it's a you also have to consider the human aspect of 
enabling GRC solutions, uh, which is the adoption. And if people don't adopt it, people are get you know turned off by the uh, the you know whatever the functionality or the the look and feel. You, it is going to be extremely hard to get them back to the to the fore of using those solutions, and then it, it becomes a miserable failure. So that's uh, what I want to kind of leave um, the 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 th final thoughts with. And I just noticed there's a little bit of a typo in both my name yes, and yes, yes, I'm, yes, I'm so sorry, uh, I just and, uh, noticed that too. Yeah. So, uh, but in any case, I you know how to find me on on LinkedIn and and also Google. But I'll turn it over to Adil. No, I think we're out of time, but I just want to say thank you for everybody. Uh, we didn't get to the Q&A section. Um, I was a bit long-winded with my example, so apologies. Please send the uh, questions over to Emma, and we'd like to chat with you uh, in person or internet, you know, set up a web conference or uh, through LinkedIn, other uh, social media. Um, and just want to thank uh, everybody that attended, especially Samia for making this such an insightful presentation that I think our customers would benefit and we look forward to having more of these sessions with you. Thank you. Thank yes, you. so thank you to everyone for attending today. Thank you, Sumya, Adil. We hope the sessions prove to be um, a valuable resource that you can take away some of the key points that we've discussed today. And as Adil and Sumya have both said, you know, you know where to, to find us and we'll be more than happy to have a one-on-one -on -one session with you to discuss the challenges you face in your own organizations. So thank you everybody and have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.